So we have a few sprites that we made from the sprite sheet, but now we're going to create a new sprite. So you can click that or click on the little Pac-Man here. And we're going to name this SPR underscore enemy one. And we're going to choose edit sprite, load as if you already have a image. So edit sprite, and it's currently empty here, so I'm going to hit the little piece of paper here to make a new one. And 32 by 32 is in pixels, and that's a good size to stick to. And right now it's empty. Uh, that's what these little blocks mean. So I double click on that. And now I'm going to scroll wheel up to zoom in. You can also use these little in and outs. Um, and before we start drawing with the tools, the left and the right over here, this is the left mouse button and the right mouse button. So if you right click on a color, it sets the right. And if you left click on a color, it sets the left. So I'm going to left on that one and right on that one. So I have this kind of yellow and black. The pencil, which is what you would think it would be, is just simple pencil. I'm going to uh, first make kind of a, <laughs> okay, it kind of looks like a mushroom. Let's try that again. Hmm, that's not bad. Okay, it's horrible, I know, but here's his little feet. Kind of fill those in. Wunderbar. Wonderful. Um, and then I'm going to use my left mouse button to kind of make a little antenna here and a little antenna there. And now I'm going to make his eyes with the circle tool here. So. I right click and drag. If I left click and drag, you'll see it does the exact opposite. So it uses whatever two colors you have set here. So I'm going to right click and drag on both of these. There's this crazy looking eyes. And then I'm just going to get the pencil tool and we'll. He's kind of happy. Well, he's an enemy, so he should probably be sad. I don't know, he's sad. Now we get a little paint bucket here and we're just going to fill it in with a slightly different color. So I'm going to set my left to that and just come in here and click. Okay, so not bad. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. Uh, let's go with this. Ugh. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> Sorry. And now, what should we do next? So we'll go through the drop down menus and see what some of these things do. So you can see some of the tricks that we use. Now, the crop tool. Uh, essentially gets rid of any junk pixels around the top, bottom, left, and right. So I usually set the border size to zero and just hit OK, um, and that gets rid of any junk pixels. Um, if you want to make him larger, you can use the stretch. You might think it would be scale, but if you do scale, it actually just enlarges the dude inside of our little box that we already had. So it doesn't actually make the sprite any larger, so I'll undo that. As opposed to stretch, which actually makes the entire thing larger, which I'm gonna undo my crop to. I'm gonna leave it at 32 by 32. Um, I'm gonna use my stretch, and let's say I wanted him to be 64. I have this check, so it automatically changed my other one for me, and that makes him a little bit larger if we want him bigger in our game. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that as well, because I like him just that size. Um, now, let's say we wanted to animate this guy a little bit. Okay, well, let's duplicate this one little frame here. And I typically just click right on him and do a Control C, Control V for paste. The shortcuts there, you can also use the copy paste commands there. So now we have two identical ones. As you can see, he's not moving, it is showing both frames 010101, but it's, nothing's happening. Um, so I'm going to open up the second frame and zoom back in here. And on this one, I'm going to, let's just uh, drag a little selection box around his leg. And oh boy, maybe that was a bad idea. I got too much. There we go. This is going to be really silly, but. Oops. We do. There we go. Now we're going to move this leg in. Yeah, I know. I have to repaint it. Oops. Right mouse button. There we go. So his legs go back and forth if I go left, right, left, right. Um, so still in the second one, I'm also going to make his antenna change a little bit. But I don't have that color stored anymore, so we can use this little eyedropper. 
and left mouse button on it and you can see it filled in the left um, color block there so uh, I'm actually first going to uh, erase with this and I'm just going to erase it to right there and then I'll just make his antennae go somewhere else so with this we'll just make it kind of go up in the air so if I look between the two frames his antennae kind of flop a little bit and his legs go back and forth not real exciting but this is how you can hand animate your little guy so now you can see he's going really really fast um, slowing this speed down does not actually slow the animation down um, so to slow the animation down so he's not moving quite so fast um, we can go to this animation and we're going to stretch it out which is going to slow him down a little bit so we go to stretch and we're going to keep it a multiple of two so um, that's a good idea to do let's say uh, four uh, much better but I'm actually going to undo and I'm going to try that again this time I'm going to stretch to let's say 10 there we go that's a nice little animation so we hit the checkbox okay okay control us to save now let's say we want uh, another enemy uh, to just have a different costume we can actually just duplicate this guy and we'll call him spray enemy 2 and a lot of games use this trick and all they do is change the color a little bit so if you want to change all the colors including the eyes and the antennae and such um, you could use the colorize option and do that or if I control Z let's say I just want to change this uh, bluish purplish color I can say image colorize partial and then just kind of use the little eyedropper tool and click right on the blue that I want to change and we'll set this color to something else can't really see his eyes anymore that's okay and there we have enemy number two costume so you might have different objects with different looking enemy costumes and that's an easy way to do that and now I've went ahead and added a new sprite uh, that has a ugly white box around them as does my red Octorok from Octorok from earlier if you look in the room when you place these things in there You have these ugly boxes around them, so we need to fix these things So we're going to open up our sprite beard guy here, and if you run across this you'll know how to do, fix it then We go to edit sprite, so he's too big He's got a white box and he moves too fast, so let's fix it all uh, first thing. Let's get rid of that background um, so under image erase a color whatever you click on it's going to get rid of it it already guessed the white color so it was ready to go already but if you actually had a different color that you needed to click on it would get rid of that color which we don't want those so we do want that white one looks good this tolerance if you drag left and right will eat into more of the object if you drag it over too far so make it so it's just getting rid of the background and say apply to all images in the sprite so it did it for all four of those Wonderful. If we just stopped there and went and looked at our room, hey look, the ugly white box is gone. That's good. No, we're not done yet. He's still moving too fast and he's too big. So we go to edit and our animation, as you remember from earlier, we're going to stretch this. So let's make it like 16. There, nice little animation. Okay, he's still too big. So let's transform and stretch. You would use stretch even if you're going smaller. So I want him to be within my 32 pixel range like the rest of the people. Uh, so let's shrink him down there. And there we go. We got him all trimmed up, ready to go. Same thing with our Octrock. We could do the similar with edit the sprite, uh, image, erase a color. And you can see it already guessed correctly, so it's pretty smart. We'll hit OK on that one, and then we would repeat the process for the other three.